you know, Alexi and team put together uh, a recent blog, uh, just one piece of information, you know, one one campaign or one set of campaigns among a lot of activity out there. So this isn't necessarily just about this scattered spider uh, blog. But Alexi, I got to ask before we dive in, you guys get the call usually on a Friday night. Hey, we need help. We need you to parachute in. What's that like? Uh, well, we certainly meet those calls with a mixture of sympathy and excitement. Uh, it's exciting to work with a new customer and get to know their environment. And sometimes we run into old friends along the way uh, that are in the environment, so that can be entertaining. Uh, but for the most part, we know that it's very stressful for the customer. Usually, customer security teams and engineering teams have already been working really hard, and they're already in overdrive for their other projects uh, and operational responsibilities before the IR is recognized. So it's already a very, very stressful time to them, and, and we're sympathetic to that. And one last quick question on that. Why is it always a Friday afternoon? I don't know. We call that IR Fridays, you know, 4.30. Uh, and whatever time zone you're in tends to be when it starts to happen. We sort of wonder if maybe like internal counsel or you imagine that people start to see something bad on Monday or Tuesday and they think, uh, what is this? Who should we call somebody? And it just takes a while for people to feel that to trickle through an organization. But it, yeah, it's it's definitely IR Fridays and right before a three-day weekend, especially. Oh, yeah, and those those darn holidays too. Um, all right, let's dive into some more specifics here. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, this set of campaigns that you all have been tracking. So uh, Scattered Spider is uh, an e-crime operator that's been targeting the telecom vertical and associated business process outsourcers. The most interesting characteristic is that they use their access to uh, swap SIM cards, which I know you'll go into in a second here. And it's also distinctive from an IR perspective because they go across cloud and endpoint on-prem with extremely aggressive pacing. Uh, it's to me characteristic of an adversary that has 0% concern for whether they're ever going to get arrested or caught. Um, and they have a certainty that they are going to get caught within the environment and that 5, 10, or 15 of their stolen accounts are going to be turned over and they need just uh, to capture even more than that. Likewise, with their remote access mechanisms. So they just leave a lot of implants all over the place and hope that the the, uh, the victim won't capture everything and, and uh, kick that out. So you see them going just a lot farther and a lot faster than most of their adversaries go. We also know that they see us and other incident response firms. Uh, we see them trying to disable our, and bypass our tools and leaving little love notes for us here and there in the form of uh, you know little messages, passwords, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing how it's all about agility and speed, and, and maybe not as much about stealth now. Um, but let's uh, let's dive in a little bit more into the technical details. Uh, so let's let's hear what you have to say, man. Sure. So it's a little bit interesting because there's a long chain of events that uh, connect different uh, victim organizations or targeted organizations, um, and then the, where we get uh, brought into the environment. So. Sometimes determining initial, determining initial access and lateral movement is a little bit challenging because you just don't really know where you are in the chain. But there's a lot of routes that uh, threat actors, in particular, scatter are using to get access, not all of which can be proven, but we know one possibility, for example, is bribery, that when you have outsourcing operations that, and you know, basically every customer we work with uses uh, this type of um, help desk, or that sort of support, typically in areas where um, cost of living and salaries are a lot lower. And so threat actors can just walk in and stand outside of a known call center and say, hey, I'll give you $4,000 if you just give me your, your password. I mean, that's very compelling for a lot of folks in a lot of places in the world. So uh, bribery is an interesting one. Uh, SIM swapping, which we discussed a little bit, and I know we'll go into a little bit further. Uh, voice phishing, so an aggressive campaign of just calling people until they'll you know click the buttons that you want them to click. Uh, MFA push fatigue, it's a trend that I think is being widely recognized in the industry now where you just keep hitting their uh, their authenticator, their, you know, the push on their phone until eventually they hit it at the wrong time. One person does it and then you're in and you know, there's not really a, uh, oops, I hit the wrong button, cancel the session. You know, and you don't even really hardly notice. So that's a big factor. Single factor VPN access. A lot of organizations um, think they have a two factor required and they probably do for some part of their one of their VPNs, but a lot of times there's more than one VPN involved. And uh, that escapes the notice of the security organization um, and a customer. Uh, the other one I have to note is a uh, certificate-based auth uh, authentication to do VPNs. It's pretty easily bypassed these days. We're seeing that the certificates are stolen. Sometimes the certificate authority servers are hit and compromised to generate new certificates for the threat actors to use themselves. And the other thing that I think is interesting is the intense focus on self-service password reset, especially in Azure AD. 
uh, where the threat actor is abusing that to just you know, reset passwords, possibly if uh, users that they know have uh, particularly significant access that they know are leaving the company and it might not be noticed uh, as that user is leaving. So they're using that and information they may have stolen from HR systems, either at the current uh, targeted organization or a previous organization uh, to participate in that pa password reset, phone numbers being a key amongst those. Uh, I know it's a lot coming over to lateral movement, interest in VDIs um, like Citrix and RDP and VPNs is a constant theme. The threat actors are trying to get somewhere in your environment, but they have to figure out what that is first and they have to explore. Sometimes they seem to already know because of poss possibly previous reconnaissance, uh, but they are overcoming in some cases, VPN policies that require two-factor authentication by just logging onto the VPN server. Uh, and we, we touch on how that happens uh, later on. Um, and then reconfiguring it to not require two-factor authentication anymore. Pretty simple approach that, so that they can keep logging into that VPN. Uh, another uh, interesting technique to get, get access and move laterally has been uh, by adding new workstations for automatic enrollment or launching new cloud VMs off of a template to get trusted access automatically. So they've created a new host in your environment based on a template that is then trusted, which they can then experiment with and use to, to launch um, you know, as, a, as a beachhead in your environment. Uh, and then finally, manipulating Azure AD groups to grant access to those uh, networks of interest so they can go exactly where they want to go.